My name is Cyril Pennerts and I'm professor of cognitive and systems neuroscience at the University of Amsterdam. In the European flagship Human Brain Project, we collaborate with many brain scientists and technologists to study one of the foremost problems in cognition. In daily life, we take it for granted that we recognize objects and scenes in our environment. We consciously perceive objects, retrieve from our memory what these objects are and what we can do with them. However, shortly after birth, our brain must still learn to perceive and order the myriads of sensory inputs into the coherent whole we call an object or scene. All that the brain gets from the outside world are trillions of electrical impulses. And somehow the human brain can make sense of those to construct a coherent view of reality. This touches on the fundamental question of how the brain generates consciousness. Here we present some of the insights from the Human Brain Project. We focus on the cerebral cortex, which is this mass of nervous tissue just beneath the skull. The cortex harbors mechanisms to construct representations of our environment, including our own body. Objects and scenes are not coded by single neurons in the cortex, but involve large populations of cells distributed across different brain areas. We record the electrical activity of these populations at ultra-high speed during live cognitive operations. In addition, we built a robot whose internal workings mimic the brain. The robot imitates a rodent behavior that exquisitely illustrates principles of object perception and recognition. This is whisking behavior. We believe that robots can be improved by use of knowledge about the brain, but these biomimetic robots can also make us better understand the brain. Like us, they have to function autonomously and work under a limited energy supply. This project strongly depends on the research infrastructure of the Human Brain Project. This is called eBrains and consists of a network of very powerful computers located throughout Europe, plus software tools for simulations, data analysis, atlases, and brain-like computer chips, all supported by many people. My name is Julien Fiorilli. I am a PhD student at the University of Amsterdam, and I work in the Human Brain Project. In this project, I study active sensing. Rats and mice use their whiskers to actively sample their environment in a way that's quite similar to how humans use their fingers. By combining visual and tactile sensory inputs, animals are able to form more accurate representations of objects in their environment. What you see here is how a rat filmed in the dark with a high-speed camera uses its whiskers to explore what is in front to discover an object that it could not see under these conditions. With their whiskers, rats can sample an object up to 20 times a second. But by using a high-speed camera, we can extract the precise moments and locations of object contacts, which we have indicated here as red dots. As you can see, the rat actively samples the object to gather tactile information. In this case, we trained rats to distinguish two or even more objects via vision, touch or both. Meanwhile, the electrical activity of many brain cells distributed across several important areas of the cortex is simultaneously recorded. This helps us to understand how incoming information from our different senses can lead to rich object percepts and the recall of associated memories. My name's Martin Pearson. I'm a senior research fellow at the Bristol Robotics Laboratory based at the University of the West of England. My role in the Human Brain Project has been to integrate models of multi-sensory perception into a biomimetic robotic model of the rat. The Whiskey robot incorporates 24 individually actuated tactile whisker sensors such that we can move them in order to mimic the whisker placement strategies and behaviors that we see in the real rats. It also has cameras for eyes such that we can capture visual tactile views of that robot as it explores and interacts with its environment. The control architecture of Whiskey is what we call a cognitive architecture. So it contains models of brainstem, 
cerebellum, basal ganglia, and superior colliculus, which combine to direct the attention or the movement of the whiskers and the robot towards salient points of interest in the environment. It then palpates those objects with its whiskers um, and it avoids collisions with those objects in the future also. Previous models of tactile attention have been used to coordinate the placement of artificial whiskers. So for example here we see how whisker-based touch coupled with this neuroethological control strategy can actually be used to safely interact with people or other delicate objects as well at the same time efficiently map the surface of those complex objects. So to map an object or an environment using touch it's very important to maintain an estimate of your robot poise so it's its heading and its location in the environment, such that any self-motion relative to that object can then be accommodated into the representation or internal map that you're building. Often this estimate of poise can be greatly improved by recalling familiar features or landmarks about the objects that you've already represented into your map. In the robotics research community, this process is referred to as simultaneous localization and mapping with the ability to recognize places being a key component of any such system. The physical Whisky robot has been ported into the neurorobotics platform of eBrains such that long duration or even parallel simulated experiments can now be performed with different objects and environments rapidly prototyped and controlled. Using the neurorobotics platform will also allow us to use other compute services available on eBrains such as the high performance or even the neuromorphic computing platforms to deploy and test much more detailed models of control and perception. In this first demonstration of the showcase, we focus on biologically plausible models of multi-sensory integration, learning and reconstruction to serve as the front end of a place recognition system capable of enabling a mobile biomimetic robot to localize itself within its environment. So how does the robot learn to recognize objects and places in its environment? For this, we go back to the cortex. And here we have a model of the cortex that has been built into the robot. It was developed by Shirendora and other collaborators of the Human Brain Project in Amsterdam and with Martin Pearson at the University of Bristol. And we see a hierarchical structure. We begin with a network for detecting tactile inputs. They come in through the whiskers of the robot and then enter through a number of layers into the network. And the network builds a representation of what is causing those whiskers to move, what it thinks is causing uh, those whisker movements. And this representation can also be regarded as a prediction. The prediction is then sent back to the left and meets the network modules where the actual sensory inputs come in. And so then the network computes an error which is the discrepancy between the actual sensory inputs and the prediction about those inputs. And this difference then can be used to make the network learn, to make better inferences about what is going on there. And the same uh, will happen for vision. There the uh, eye camera images will enter into the network and also predictions will be made to capture the causes of those visual changes that occur. But here we're looking at separate vision and touch modules. Of course, you also want to merge the two images. And for this, we need a multi-sensory module where both the visual pathway and the tactile pathway come together so that you can actually transform visual inputs into a tactile representation or the other way around. So this is like when you imagine uh, an apple, uh, you can touch an apple with your hands if you close your eyes, you can predict what it will look like. And the other way around also. You can look at the apple without touching it, and your vision can guide your hands towards grabbing the apple, and you will actually also know what it will feel like. So then the question is, where in the brain could this multi-sensory module be? One of the areas we think about is the perirhinal cortex, because that's indeed where tactile and visual inputs are being integrated. And it is also located at the crossroads towards the hippocampus, which is a memory structure. And the hippocampus is indeed known to be important for both spatial memory and linking objects to particular places in the environment. 
So this illustrates um, how the robot is being driven by the model, uh, but also how it might match the actual mammalian brain. Here you see electrical traces of neural activity recorded from the rat brain while the animal was engaged in object exploration and recognition. Above, you see the mass electrical signal that's recorded from the area uh, of the barrel cortex. We call this signal the local field potential, which is comparable to an EEG signal. Just underneath, you see the local field potential recorded from visual cortex and from the hippocampus. Below, you see several examples of individual brain cells that emit electrical impulses, which reach other neurons in the network. We isolate these so-called spikes and we determine what these spikes are coding for. For instance, motor patterns of the animal, responses to light, visual inputs and whisker touches, or indeed specific object information. We record spikes from dozens of individual cells simultaneously, so we can look at what each individual area is coding. In addition, we can study how these cells interact with one another and how they cooperate in a bigger network. And we compare that to the computational model that drives the Whisky robot. Here we have seen how robots imitate complex mammalian behaviors, such as active exploration of an environment, how they learn to recognize objects and use inputs from multiple senses to navigate through their environment. The project is driven by multiple disciplines that leverage the eBrain's infrastructure of the Human Brain project. Experimental neuroscience, robotics, computer modeling, using high-performance computing. The project illustrates the potency of multi-scale modeling and experiment. Processes playing at the micro-scale of neurons and spikes lie at the basis of large-scale processes, such as prediction, recognition and behavior. These high-level processes can now be better understood as resulting from the underlying network structure, the cooperative interactions between neurons. So this project is one example of what the Human Brain Project is about, computing the brain.